Um, if you want to come with these guys and do meat, so you and then the two big tables split in two. So the back table, the three of you at the back can do fruit and vegetables, and you three at the front of the table can do dairy. And the same here, if you three can do cereals, and you two can do processed composite foods. All I want you to do, just a couple of minutes, think about what other information do you need from people about that food group to be able to accurately convert it to nutrient data. So an example being for meat, how is it cooked? Because clearly a fried steak is going to be completely different nutritionally, well not completely different, I'm exaggerating now, <laughs> but a fried steak is going to be nutritionally different from a grilled steak. So that is an example of what I mean. Okay, so things that would change the nutrient information within that food group. So therefore, what extra questions, what probes are you going to ask, what do you need to know about those food groups to be able to accurately code a diary? Okay, fruit and veg. Who was doing fruit and veg? Any ideas? Um, it's tin, uh, it's syrup. Yeah. Whether it's been cooked, baked, baked apple or fresh apple. Yeah, absolutely. So clearly cooking fruit and veg makes a big difference and how it's cooked. Yeah, so steam. Yeah. So because of all the water-soluble vitamins, again, you know, if you look at any food composition list, you'll see that it usually will give you even the bare minimum will be a boiled and raw or something, because that's where you're going to get the biggest difference. And anything cooked in water, you're obviously going to lose quite a lot of water-soluble vitamins and minerals. Often, the databases, again, don't have a lot of data currently for things like steaming, so you might have to just go with the raw. You know, again, you've got to make a judgment that you think which is going to be the best representation depending on what nutrients you're interested in. It's been an excellent day and um, the workshop has went really well. I've talked to a lot of the delegates that have attended the workshop and they've all really enjoyed it. It's been a really great opportunity for myself and my students to network with people that we wouldn't necessarily meet um, within the confines of the university and it's also been very successful in that there's almost been 20 people who have attended the workshop so we're very 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 pleased at the number of people that have attended. So something else which has, has been going on which I think is, is really exciting is using mobile phones um, to collect self-reports of, of food intake and um, one of the key people that's working in this area is uh, Carol Shane who's based in Purdue and they've been working with children uh, the first study they did they got them to do a diary um, on paper they also got them to do a diary on a PDA using a sort of simple drop down. And they got them to use mobile phones to take pictures of their food and then annotate it with labels. Um, not terribly surprisingly, they found that the kids didn't like the paper uh, version very much and much preferred the uh, technology based dietary assessment methods. And what they've been working on is a system by which somebody puts in uh, this fiducial marker which is the sort of checkerboard which um, allows um, a computer to look um, it, it's basically sort of um, a reference for the computer to use when it's looking at portion size estimation um, so those are put in each of the pictures and the child is asked to take a picture of the food they had before uh, and afterwards and they're working on um, algorithms, um, computing algorithms, which will allow them not only to identify the food, but also to estimate uh, the portion size. Having the Nutrition Society on our campus is um, not only a really great opportunity to have um, an elite organisation's presence on the campus, but it's also a really great opportunity to showcase the wonderful university that we have here at Edge Hill, but also, more importantly, it will facilitate people in the North West who would like to increase their skills and knowledge around the, the workshop topics that the Nutrition Society offers. Something else that's been developed by uh, colleagues in, in Newcastle is uh, something called MAPNAL, which is for use at the moment in hospitals and it's for monitoring uh, malnutrition. And the idea is that the, um, the people get a picture of the food which they're served for their meal in hospital. And then either they or um, a carer is able to use their finger to rub out the amount of food that they've had. 
and then the system calculates the amount of nutrients that they've got um, from what they've consumed. And the idea is that that then links in with uh, the different systems so that the doctors, the, um, the nurses and also the auxiliary staff are able to see that information. So sorry, they take a picture of the food that, that's actually... No, no, there's a, 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 there's a computer picture oh, computer. associated with the different meal options oh. and they get, that, they get that picture and then they're able to rub out um, to say what they've had. Um, finally, objective measures. Um, these, in a way, would, would be the gold standard. If you could hide in a tree and lurk and use binoculars to spy on someone without them knowing and write down everything that they ate, that would give you a pretty accurate picture of what they eat and what they normally eat because you shouldn't be having too much of an impact on their usual diet. We have a very um, student-centred ethos in this university. It's very important to all members of staff in this university that we give every student um, every opportunity that we can to increase their knowledge and skills through offering them different opportunities. And the Dean of our faculty very kindly agreed to fund five of our undergraduate students to attend the event. We had a very good working relationship. Um, I worked really closely with members of staff in the Nutrition Society and because of that really good working relationship we've had a really successful day at Edge Hill.